All right, welcome back. Um, Will Pettis here. I have a special guest. Though I'm a little afraid here, I'm afraid if I ask a question I'm not supposed to, I'm going to have to start running laps uh, or doing 10 and ones here. <laughs> but uh, I have Phil Willard here with me. I never thought I'd have a chance to interview Phil Willard, but here we are. How are you doing? Uh, doing real well, Will. It, it's good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Uh, how does it feel be, to be back in this gym? Uh, really nice tonight. Uh, got to come back and, and visit with players uh, from our 04-2003-2004 uh, uh, season and uh, got to see the, the young ladies and uh, uh, catch up with them, uh, their families, and, uh, you know, their children, husbands. Uh, and mm-hmm. then, of course, some of their mothers and, and fathers sure. and stuff. And got to see a lot of people here at the gym that uh, bring back a lot of fond memories. That's great. Well, I want to make sure I'm clear on the uh, the time that you were here. I know, I know you had several different roles as assistant coach, you know, boys and girls both. But as far as head coaching goes, you would have taken over here in the 94-95 season after uh, Coach McBee step down right. coach three years of boys basketball one of those years going to the state tournament in 96 right. um and those were my three years at summertown i always tell people you just couldn't stand the thought of not coaching me and so when i graduated you had to step away for a while yeah, it was tough <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh but then there was a vacancy uh in the girls position uh, girls head coach in the 01 the 2000 2001 season yes. right yes and so then you came and and saved the day there and that's really when girls basketball changed here forever well thank you uh, I, I wouldn't really say save the day but yeah. Yeah. Uh, i appreciate you saying that yeah i was i was actually assistant under coach McB. Uh, i was actually you know he let me stay around as a uh player i guess trap dummy or whatever at columbia <laughs> state in the late 70s and i got to know coach and he brought me in 86, 87 uh, as an assistant, and uh, that was with a crew that a bunch of hard-fighting guys, and and we had a good time with that group. I, I learned a few things, definitely. Uh, coach McBee was a great, great coach and a uh, special individual, and I got to coach. Then I, I left and went into Wayne County and, and coached uh, down there for five years, came back to uh, – to here, uh, 92, 93, and 93, 94 as assistant under coach. And he just taught me so much. He did so much to make this a, a truly neat environment. I'm not knocking anybody before coach. Right. There have been a lot of people here in Summertown competitive for a long time. But coach kind of put a little charisma in that was extra special. And, uh, and then we got to come in, and I enjoyed you guys. And, had some winners and competitors, and uh, we were blessed uh, with that. And um, and then, you know, I got out for a bit, uh, just some things, uh, uh, family, my dad, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, so I, I want to make sure. So you're nine years as a girls yeah. coach, uh, four state tournament appearances, um, which was, again, the, the reason why we're celebrating this team so much tonight, 20 years yeah. ago because that was the first time they had been to the state tournament since uh, looking at the board up there, 1967. It was really the first time in the five-on-five era that we've ever had a girls team in the state tournament. Uh, So honoring that team here tonight, talk about that 03, 04 bunch and what you remember about them. Yeah, it's just, you know, I was actually here 10 as girls coach. Will Oh, uh, no, 10. 10, yes, uh uh-huh. And uh, left after the 9-10 season. But that group was extra, so extra special in the fact Megan Corbin, uh, was just uh, just a tremendous leader in her only senior and hardest practicing uh, player. Uh, you know, just a true competitor and, and warrior. And so she was a leader of the group and very talented junior point guard, uh, Brittany Lovett. Uh, Brittany was a smooth operator and could make clutch free throws and preserve games at the end. And we got dialed in and uh, got got focused there. We had some ups and downs, but we got dialed in and focused and uh, really got special there toward the end of the year. Uh, had some good young players. Uh, Tamia Tucker was a, a great little young guard and, you know, young, but still you could tell. Emily Franks and Beth Long and Mallory Scott were warriors and competitors and, and uh, Jessica Tucker on that team and uh, just some kids there that uh, gelled together under good leadership from Megan. And sure. and and next thing you know, in one week, we've gone from 
from really uh, not looking all that great to sitting in the state tournament. And uh, pretty pretty special, pretty fun time. It was a sub-state game here at home against Good Pasture, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Very good Good Pasture team. It's back when the privates were in it. Right. Before the multiplier rule. Uh, they, I think single A now has, has gotten watered down looking at it. And I kind of missed that extra. It was really extra competitive at that time to get out of single A. And I know y'all are double mm -hmm. now, and uh, mm -hmm. that's that's a that's a tougher brand. But uh, that Good Pasture, nobody expected them really to be here, but they were. They upset mm -hmm. a good is either FRA or Ezel. Those are powerhouses up there, and uh, we beat them in a tight game. We trailed there in the fourth quarter, but uh, fought back and uh, got the win here, and it's, it's uh, pretty sweet. So there's several players playing. And these girls and boys games that are the children of people that you coached. I'm going to name a, a few of them here, and I'm okay. going to leave people out. I'm afraid to do this. Cassie Heatherly was one of the first players you coached as a girls coach. Yeah, on the first first yeah. group, yes. Yeah, and so she's got um, a young daughter on the team. Andrew Mabry out here playing. Yeah. And, um, of course, his dad was one of the tough – I'm guessing – I'm going to put words in your mouth – one of the tougher players you've ever – Yeah. Yeah, he was Rambo, Rambo <laughs> out there. You know, I mean, Ricky was—he, uh, we didn't have a trainer, so he just bandaged himself up and played. He, he really, that's do you do you remember him reason. coming to practice on a tractor? It's truth. I have <laughs> said that, and the people think I'm lying, and that's the truth. And uh, you, you got to be grow up in the country to understand that. Uh, uh, yeah. City guys, they can't imagine driving a tractor to practice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mackenzie Runnels plays on the girls' team, so, you know, you coached her dad, Absolutely. Josh. Josh, fine talent. Yeah, Olivia Riggs, you coached Doug Riggs. Doug, Doug, yeah, first uh, a first boys' team here, senior uh, senior that year. And Doug, uh, Doug's a good point guard, good and, athlete. And then uh, she's, not, she's graduated a couple of years ago, but Katie Burdett, uh, oh, yeah. just an amazing player here, but, you yeah. know, her dad – yeah, I watched Aaron was a Aaron was a, a warrior, a fighter, and and had some hands and ability down there, and it was uh, special. But I watched them in the finals. I was pulling hard for them. I yeah. thought they were going to get Loretta there. I guess it's 2018, and I thought it was right. going to bring a title to Summertown. And yeah, as that was the COVID season. It's 2020. Uh, that, yeah, that was. Don't we don't want to ask Clint about that? He's he, he's a, had his heart broken that that year. Um, well, let me ask you the difference. Coaching girls, coaching boys, done both. Yeah. What's your thoughts looking back on that and the differences? Well, if I got around a bunch of guys, I'd tell them the uh, difference is, and I've told them this, is the girls are a heck of a lot tougher than you guys are because <laughs> they don't have mama necessarily to take care of them all the time. There you and, go. of course, they get all mad and everything, <laughs> which you want them to. Now. Yeah. But now, I don't think – if you got competitors and you got people that want to play – I don't think it matters. Uh, I think if you've got girls that want to be coached, they will be. And if you got guys, it's the same. And I, I enjoy both. They're both different uh, to a point. Uh, you don't have to get the NBA out of the girls as much as you do the guys. Oh, there you go. Good point. <laughs> well, well said. So what do you think about all this exports uh, and watching games from home? What would that have been like in the 90s? Man, I tell you, y'all got a great setup here. I gone nuts with the film and stuff it's yeah. a, uh about went nuts anyway watching it on the old stuff that i had but i wouldn't have had to drive to get film right in all these places out there i heard you say earlier that you used to dream and fast forward and rewind because that, you did that so much it's, watching film it's true i know it's crazy <laughs> but yeah film preparation is big and, right. uh, but enjoy being here tonight man i i thank you guys and i'll get off here and let y'all right. get back to biz well hey it's great talking hey, to you great, great seeing you great thanks having, great Come, having Come back and see us anytime, please. Hey man, thank y'all. Thanks again, Coach Phil Willard, stopping in and reminiscing. Thank you, sir. All right.